Welcome everyone, back with another chess video here, and today we will be discussing about essentially pass pawns and how to blockade them and what pieces are best to do that with. And here we are in the middle of a nice chess game here with two very strong players, both over 2300. And so before we get to this position here and discuss why one side is going to be much better than the other, we have to first explain which pieces are better at blockading pawns and why. So let me go back to an example there, and then we'll come back to this position. All right, so here we have a little instructional thing. We can just ignore most of the other pieces. Let's just focus our attention on the white pawns here. And so if we have any pawn that is passed, and what a pass pawn means is that there isn't an enemy pawn that can get in the way of this pawn promoting. So if we were to focus on this white e4 pawn here, then we would have to think, well, how can this pawn push all the way to promotion? In this case, it'd be the e8 square. And so are there any black pawns in its way that is stopping it? So like if there was a pawn here on e5, then this e4 pawn is not passed because, of course, there's a pawn blocking it. Same thing if there was a black pawn on e6, e7. You know, it would be in, in the way of this pawn. However, if there was also a black pawn on either of these squares, or even this square for that matter, all, all those locations would also mean this pawn is not passed because pawns attack diagonally. And so if we were to imagine like a pawn on either f6 or d6, this e5 pawn cannot push safely because one of these two pawns would just capture it. And so a pass pawn has to be past those points. So in this case, we have no black pawns. So all three of these white pawns are passed. Now, what pieces can you use? You know, if there's no pawns nearby, you're going to have to block with a piece to stop this from turning into a queen. So what pieces are better to do that with? Well, here, let's actually go through a rundown. So first of all, we'll start with the queen. Um, well, actually, before that, I'll notice what the important square is here. So there's one square important. If you want to block a pawn, especially a pass pawn, you have to block the square directly in front of it. In this case, the e5 square, because this pawn is going up forward. And if it was like a black pawn, say on b6, then the square that we need to stop is called is b5. And the, these squares are called stop squares because it's basically stopping that pawn from advancing. And so if we wanted to block this e4 pawn with, say, a queen, then we would do that with this queen move, queen to e5, because this queen is now s sitting on or occupying the stop square of this pawn. This pawn can no longer advance because it is quite literally stopped by this queen. Now, in this exact example, I'll just move out of check here. Now, the queen is actually the worst blockader that you can use. If you have any other options, you usually want to choose those options instead of the queen. And the reason why this queen really shouldn't be blockading here is because this pawn is worth one point. You know, and this queen is worth nine points. And you don't want to be tying down nine points of your own force, you know, of your entire army just to basically babysit this one pawn. You know, you don't want to be having it, you know, sitting there doing nothing. You know, it's doing something blocking the pawn, but very little for its piece value. And not only that, but this queen is a very powerful piece of mobility. As far as piece movement goes, you know, the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard. And the problem is here, in trying to blockade this pawn, you know, a lot of its scope is restricted. Normally, we would have this entire you know, from E5 to E1, you know, scope of sight, but here it's just blocked to this one pawn. And so the problem with having a queen is it's simply worth too much value. Same problem with the rook. It's very easy for a minor piece, like a knight or a bishop, to land somewhere and kick the queen away, or even worse, a pawn, and then that kicks this queen away, and once it leaves the stop square, say if this queen is forced to go somewhere else, then all of a sudden we can start pushing this pawn and gaining ground and the other side will not be able to hold the blockade. So queen is not ideal. So let's see what other pieces are. Well, of course, we could take a look at the bishop. So bishops are a lot better blockaders to queens or rooks. This is a pretty decent blockader because notice we are blocking the stop square. You know, here this e4 pawn stop score is e5. And so because this pawn can't move, you know, it looks like this piece is doing its job. But unlike the queen, this bishop is not restricted at all. You know, we take a look at the bishop's scope here, and all of this scope is un unaffected by this pawn. Whereas the queen, some of its control was taken away, you know, because when the queen was here, the queen could not look all the way down here as it normally would. 
So bishops are pretty decent blockaders, you know, and also notice that like if a pawn were to start advancing here or here, you know, the bishop could also take it, which also the queen could do to be fair. But you know, that might be useful if there's like an entire pawn chain base, you know, something like this, some kind of pawn chain all the way down to the base, you know, none of these pawns could advance because you have the bishop controlling all of these squares. And that's also the same reason that opposite color bishop endgames are also a draw a high frequency of the time because these are really good blockaders that can block these pawns. However, there are there's actually another piece that's even better than the bishop. And of course, it's in the video thumbnail here. And yes, that is knights. And so knights are the best piece that you can use to blockade pawns. And the reason for this is because just like the bishop, it is its scope is not limited at all. You know, this knight still has all of these squares that it can go to. And all of this, you know, this one pawn does not affect at all. And so that's actually a really useful thing for this piece. But it's better for the knight. And the reason it's even better is because if we were to imagine this, you know, past pawn here that white wants to get going, black wants to have blockaded. If white wanted to defend this pawn, how would they do so with, a, with one of their own pawns? Well, they would have to play a move like pawn to d3 or pawn to f3. And unlike the queen, bishop, or rook, the knight actually can control these squares while it is blockading this e4 pawn. And so because of that, it is actually very difficult to do anything, you know, for the side with the pawn if it is blockaded by a knight. And so for this reason, the knights are actually the best blockaders of pass pawns. Now, with all that being said, let's actually go back to the actual game and we'll show a really amazing combination that happened and show quite simply how one side is going to be much better than the other side. So here's the game. Now, in this position, the computer, you can see, is completely equal. It says this is 0.0, .0 so it's an equal position. It took me a while to find a pass pawn example where it's completely equal, but we'll soon see one side is going to be much better. Now, black is about to move, and they had a lot of good moves, I think. You know, maybe not a ton, but, you know, they have a lot of kingside pressure on white's king. I, th I think white probably could have done something like this, maybe threatened this square. I know it's defended by the bishop, but, you know, it's a nice idea. And it's forking, the, you know, the bishop here. Um, same thing with this bishop. Maybe do something to have white react to something. You know, give them threats. I think those would have been decent moves. Maybe even knight g4 would have been an interesting idea. Um, but black has, you know, a few things to do. However, they instead play this move, which looks okay. You know, you're going to coordinate your rook, who's not doing much on a7. Maybe they'll get it into the game on f8. You know, something along those lines. But there's actually one move, which is very hard to find, I think, for most players. And this is the only move that keeps white winning. All the other moves are losing. And so if you're thinking in the terms of pass pawns, and especially about which pieces can blockade what, then you might actually be able to be more likely to find this move. Now, again, material is equal. The position was pretty equal before. And the move that white actually can play here is actually rook captures d6. Yes, you are sacrificing an entire rook to get one pawn, this one pawn here. Now, you're actually going to get a lot more for it. You're actually going to get a minor piece, in this case the knight, and two pawns in the process. And so how it goes is white will capture on d6, take one pawn, the loser rook for it. But now that pawn was, you know, defending this knight. So now white will play bit, um, rook captures e5 attacking the black queen, so the black queen should move somewhere. And then we get bishop captures c5. And then, of course, black is going to move their rook to safety. White will retreat back. And now, you know, material is still equal. White has sacrificed their rook for one minor piece and two pawns. However, if we look at the evaluation here, this is already over plus two. You know, white is much better. And why, is, why are they much better? Well, quite frankly, they have really good piece activity, and these connected pass pawns are going to be very dangerous. Now, remember what the best blockader possible was. The best blockader of pass pawns was a knight, specifically to get on one of the stop squares. Now, if we look at what stop squares there are for these pawns, well, for the d5 pawn, the stop square is going to be the d6 square. And for the c4 pawn, the c5 square is going to be the blockading the stop square. So if black could get a piece to one of those squares, especially d6, and especially if it was a knight, maybe they could sort of try and hold this position. However, you might remember that earlier in the game, in this exact position, right before they sacrificed, black had one knight. So maybe if they had gotten an option, they could have, you know, relocated this knight somewhere. But when white played this sacrifice, 
They win that night, the key defender that was there. And after all this is done, material is still equal. But now they have these really two pass pawns, very strong. And the enemy has, you know, no more knights, which are the best blockaders. And so when you put that all together, you know, white is overwhelming here because of the fact that black cannot successfully blockade. Now I'll show the rest of the game real briefly just so you can kind of see what happened. So black tried to trade rooks. Maybe they thought they could maybe somehow hold the defense of these pawns in the end game. It's not going to be enough, but you know, material is equal, so it might not look so bad. So we'll start with c5. You have to do something about this. Now, you cannot take this pawn. That is not a free pawn, because if you do, we have bishop c4, and then you're going to lose the queen because of the pin on the king. So that pawn is tactically defended. So black will play bishop f5. They start pushing these pass pawns. Now, again, notice, if we wanted to stop these pawns, you know, we would look at what are the stop squares. In this case, the stop square is c7 or d6. They could get a piece to any of those two squares, especially a knight. You know, they would do a pretty good job. Also note that if we had a knight here on c7, hypothetically, notice that the knight would be controlling these two squares here. And especially in this case, you'd be controlling d5, which means that here, you know, white would be under a lot of pressure as well as, you know, having their own pawn on c6 blockaded. So a knight like on c7 would have maybe been holding the position a little bit, but they do not have a knight. And so black has to use something else. So they will go here, you know, white moves, queen d6, trying to blockade the pawns. But, you know, they're in a bad shape already. You know, this is a dark square. So this light squared bishop really couldn't block any of the stop squares. And this rook, you know, they just so happen to choose the queen based on how they played it. But queen or rook are not good pieces for blockading. You know, they're doing the best they can. This is a stop square, stopping the d5 pawn from advancing. But it's just not going to be enough because this queen is too easily going to be able to be kicked away from one of white's other pieces of lesser value. So we play pawn to c4, get rook e8, c5. Again, these pawns are going to be very strong. Queen moves away, d6, very powerful stuff. Rook to e4, and then we have queen to d5 check. And black resigned in this position because white is attacking their king because it's check, and they're forking this bishop at the same time. And the problem is you can't block with the bishop because if you do, we'll just take the rook for free. And so th that's no good. And so the only other way you could really defend if the game were to continue would be queen e6, but then white can actually trade queens. And after white trades queens, now they have pawn to d7. And with pawn to d7, you know, the game is over because this bishop is not going to do anything. It can try sacrifice, sacrificing itself, but it's not going to solve the problem. And this pawn will promote. And you can't even get the rook behind here because, of course, this square is controlled by the bishop. And so the game is just completely over because black, quite simply, did not have the best defender possible, which would have been the knight for blockading past pawns. So I hope this was instructional for everyone and shows you the power of why knights were the best blockaders of past pawns. So thanks for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video.